What's going on guys? Got an update video for you today on my path to building a 100K a month agency. Super excited to dive in. I've got a ton to share. A lot of lessons I've been learning, a lot of challenges I've been facing. It's been hard, but it's been good and we're making progress. Progress is life, right? I don't know how long it's gonna take me to get there. We started around mid-August where I really decided to scale and build a team and, and go all in on, on this whole marketing agency that I've been running the last four years. So I've been doing these updates every six weeks or so. I'm gonna run through the numbers, show you exactly where we're at, the sales, all that good stuff, all right? So stick to the end. I guarantee you're gonna find one or two keys you can use to implement into your own business, your own marketing agency to really help you level up. All right. So before we jump in, if you're looking to start your own agency, you're looking to get into this marketing game, help local businesses and help people prosper their business and be a rainmaker, someone that can truly make it rain for other businesses, then grab my free course. I'll drop it below. It's everything I've been learning over the last four years to help you really get to that 10K a month mark as fast as possible. Okay. So I'll drop the link to that. Other than that, enjoy the video. All right, let's dive into the numbers here. We will start with total closes. How many closed deals based on each month? And we started this in August, really deciding to scale to 100K. So I really started implementing, strategizing to how do we get to 100K a month in August. And we started tracking in August. So we have numbers based on August, which we brought in 10 new deals. September, we brought in 15. So far in October, we only have five new deals. In October, vacations is the main reason. A lot of the team has been out and uh, we slowed down our ad spend a bit. So those are that's the total amount of closes, right? Let's talk about close rate. I have two closers and this is the average close rate of all our, our sales team. So in August, when we first started, it was only 20%. Well, close to 21% close rate. And then in September, it's up to about 32% and we're right around 33% as of now. The goal there is to really get to about 40% and then all the way up to 60% close rate. Keep in mind, we have two different offers, right? We have our, our do-it-yourself software package, which they can launch ads on their own using the software, high level and UPEX combination which they get support and whatnot, but that's our lower, you know, 597 a month package. Then we have our high end done for you package, which is 2000 a month at the, at the time of this recording, we're probably going to raise the price or it's 4,500 for three months. So that is where we do everything for them, run the ads. We have a call center in us based that we call text, qualify and schedule the leads for them. And basically do everything. All they got to do is, is show up and take the appointment. That's our higher end program, right? So we have two offers and uh, let's talk about cash collected though. This is definitely an important metric. As you can see, when we first started out, we were only, our average ticket price was only $900, right? That's where our price was only $397 a month and then a little setup fee. And then we really didn't have the higher end done for you package at that point. And at the end of September is really when we started offering the higher end package. As you can see, our, our uh, cash collected was up to about $1,100 which is decent. And then so far in October, you know, we are focusing more on selling the higher ticket packages. So our average cash collected over across five deals is, is $2,500, right? Other metrics we're tracking that are important is to see like, what's your first call close rate? Like how many deals are getting closed on that first call? For whatever reason, it's not loading for October, but around 18 to 19% is, is fine which is one of the main things I've been learning is like the importance of follow-up. As you can see in August, we had nine new appointments closed. So that's on the first call, right? First call closes about nine, nine deals. Follow-up appointments closed, only one in August. And part of that maybe you know, just the salespeople building up their pipeline. But one of the key things we did to increase follow-up closes is just literally making sure on that first call, if you don't close the deal, you better have a follow-up appointment on the books, on the calendar before you get off the call. Like that's just a rule we started focusing on. And as you can see, those numbers increased tremendously to in September, six of the total, almost half the deals came from follow-ups, right? So instead of just not having a follow-up plan in place, and we, we implemented some other things as well to help um, with the follow-up process. Nevertheless, the main one was literally just scheduling it out while you're on that first call. So definitely do that if you're taking sales calls 
and are not closing on the first call, make sure you have a follow-up schedule. And so far, pretty yeah, we don't even have any new deals closed in October. They're all from follow-ups, right? And part of that is just the, the challenging nature of Facebook ads, being able to stay consistent. Uh, we did switch some things up and our lead flow did slow down. We also lowered our ad spend because of vacations uh, for myself and the team. We're out for a couple weeks in October so far. All right, so let's let's cover front end cash generated. August, we collected 9,000. Uh, October's close to 17,000. So far, we are at um, 12,585 in October. We've got a good we've got a good week lined up of appointments, so things should improve here. The goal is to close out at at least uh, twenty five thousand in October. As far as total revenue in September, we did about thirty two thousand in revenue. October, the goal is to be around like thirty five to thirty seven. So we shall see. All right, so let's see any other appointments uh, or any other numbers we should go over. Yeah, so new appointments. Yeah. Keep in mind, we also all of our appointments are it's like 97% from paid ads right now. Occasionally we're going to, we will run a reactivation campaign. Like I'm going to do that right now for the last week of October. I've got about 4,000 people in my database, so we can always book a lot of appointments from, from my current database of leads I've collected over the years, targeting gym owners, running ads to gym owners. But yeah, so in August we had 77 new booked calls. September was 104 booked calls. And yeah. So you can see our total ad spend. For the month of August, we spent 8,400. September, we spent 11,000. In October, so far we've only we've spent about 6,000. Uh, return on ad spend. This is where it needs to be at least for for our goals of two to one. Even if you're at one, you know, even if your your ROAS is 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 break even, that's still pretty good. If you can break even on your ad spend, you still have a money printing machine as long as you have recurring revenue. And the next month and the next month they're going to stick with you then if you could break even on the first month you're in the game all right so that's a huge lesson but let's get into I, I did create some notes uh, as far as some other lessons i'm learning along the way that can help you out and the main one here is running successful facebook ads like what does it take what i'm learning is it's just the the uh, the dire need for consistency and quantity so consistency meaning I have a cadence of recording new ads, putting new ads out every single week, and and the amount of ads that I'm putting out needs to increase. So that's what I'm learning. Like I need to put out more ads. I need to put out a lot more variety of hooks. I need to be testing different offers, different hooks, different guarantees, whatever variable I can test, I need to do that. So right now I'm doing image ads, I have video ads. You know, we're testing just little things based on color, uh, but mostly the biggest impact is like, what's the offer on the ad, right? Like what's the hook? What are you, what are you saying to get people to book a call? Like that's the main thing. And then just being able to not give up when it gets hard. Like right now we're having a challenge getting our cost per booked call down. Like, let's see, like our cost per booked call was around $80. And, and this month it like jumped up to $114 for gyms, right? So, we're, we started trying some other things that are not performing. Oftentimes the temptation is to throw in the towel and give up, but those are the times where you gotta push through. If we're gonna keep this going and win, then we can't just give up when it's not performing like we'd like it to, right? So that's what I'm learning as far as regarding Facebook ads. The other thing is you just can't be afraid to spend. Like it's a lot of money spent for us, you know, spending 10, 11 grand a month is a lot of money to spend. So one, you just, you can't be afraid to do it, right? Like this is how you're gonna scale. This is how you win with ads. You gotta be able to spend a decent amount. As long as you have your numbers above 30%, you know, for us, that's what we found. It's like, hey, as long as we're closing above 30%, then, then we can be profitable. The other thing is just leveraging a 0% credit card for ad spend. Like this is huge for small business owners to be able to leverage debt, right? It's free money. As long as you pay it on time and you have a plan to pay it every month, like we pay about 50% off of that credit card every single month. The other 50%, we just plan to pay it off over the next 15 months, which is the length of time that I have for 0%, right? I, I've done this multiple times and I've never had to pay interest on these credit cards. Just think about it, like a lot of companies, the big companies, right? They get millions for investing, you know, from investors so that they can play around, they can dump it into ad spend without a care. But for us small business, really small business owners, cash flow is everything. 
right? And instead of going out and taking out a loan, you can literally just use a credit card. So I'll, I'll, I'll put a link down to one that I like, but you can find these, you can find these anywhere, right? The other lesson I learned was increasing our price. This has made a huge difference in our cash collected, which is really fun to identify different levers you can pull in your business to really make a big difference, to make an impact in your business, right? So if you look at the last you know, three months, we've been really going at this. Each month, our cash collected gets higher, and that's because we've raised our prices. Our, our done for you was 1500 now it's it's 2000 It's gonna be 2500 a month, and that's just simply by raising our prices and then adding in a call center, which increases the value. And that's in-house call center as well, and they're US-based. So that just increases the value, and we were able to really increase the price. The other thing we did was start selling quarterly plans for our uh, do-it-yourself plan. So it's, it's either $5.97 a month or you can pay in full for three months for $14.91. So you save a few hundred bucks. That increases our cash collected. That's going to help us afford to advertise and acquire more clients profitably. So that, I cannot stress enough, that's been so crucial in our ability to just profit. And then we also sell every now and then, uh, well, actually pretty consistently lately is, is $4,500 PIFs. So three months up front for our done for you, they save a lot of money and uh, it's $4,500 like that. That just hits differently. So when you get, when you're, you, when you're selling these little SaaS plans for like $595 a month or $1,500 for three months, and then you get a $4,500 for three months, that is a game changer for your business. That's why I'm a firm believer. You need to have a high ticket, higher ticket offer, not just SaaS. Like it's so hard to grow a pure SaaS business just because of the cash flow. You're selling something for 200 bucks a month. And in my experience, it's almost the same amount of energy in regards to uh, running Facebook ads to get clients from my agency. It's the same amount of energy to close these people. Unless you're doing webinars and you're closing people in mass, if you're doing one-on-one -on -one calls, it takes the same amount of energy and time to close someone on a $1,500 product, a $2,500 product as it is a $500 a month product, which is crazy, right? And it's actually almost easier to fulfill a done for you service at times, depending on the client, um, because we don't have to train them on anything. And when we sell the software, we got to train their team. They, there's a larger learning curve. Whereas with done for you, we just say, here's your appointment. We do everything. Boom. Take it. It's simple. All right. So I definitely re recommend you have that in your, uh, in your repertoire there, have a high ticket service, something that you're selling. The other thing I'm learning is just team building. You know, for the last three or four years, I've had a, a pretty decent team, a client success team, media buyer, client success manager. In the last month, we brought on an onboarding specialist. So all they do is take onboarding calls, which has helped alleviate our client success manager because they were getting overwhelmed for bringing on 15, 20 new clients a month. They're having to do onboarding and support. It's just a lot, right? So we've started focusing on building team and uh, part of team building that I've not been good at is building a sales team. I've tried to do it in the past, but for whatever reason, have not been able to be successful with it. But this time uh, we were, we're doing well. And I believe that the part that I did not want to do is just that, uh, and that, that's part of my next statement is, is being a good leader. It's just doing team meetings, consistent, regular team meetings where, for example, I myself, I made myself the sales director. Okay, now I'm gonna do, and if you watch my first video, I was like, hey, I'm just gonna hire these sales guys. Hopefully they perform, hopefully they do well. I don't like doing meetings. We'll see how it goes. Well, I've learned, uh, as you can see in the stats, when you don't, when you just leave everybody up to their own devices and you don't coach and train them, this is the kind of results you get. A 12% increase is a result of our close rate because I started doing call reviews and I actually hired a mentor that is great in sales and they were able to help coach my sales team and we're able to set up a sales system where now I can review and give feedback and coach them on the sales process, meet with them consistently throughout the week. Like those little things are the variables that I can control as a business owner that are going to increase our close percent and a 10% Close rate is not just a 10%, you know, increase in revenue. That's a lot more. I don't know what the exact stats are, but it's at least a 30 to 40% increase in, I mean, just look at our cash generated, right? So a 10% increase in close rate is a dramatic shift in the business. And that comes from being a good leader, I've been a better leader. And that's, that's, uh, that's what I'm learning. That's what it takes is, all right, I got to suck it up. 
I have to do these things I don't want to do. Like that's business. Not everything's going to be enjoyable all the time. Although I have found that doing call reviews and coaching my sales team is actually, um, it's actually pretty fun. It's actually pretty cool. Especially when you can track and see the increase in the direct result of your efforts. Okay. So those two kind of go hand in hand, building a, building a good team. Also, we did this, have a consistent funnel to recruit talent. We created this whole hiring funnel. So now we have a funnel to recruit talent, right? We got our whole, we put together this little video of our team saying why they like to work here. I've got a little mission. We got our values laid out. We've got all the jobs that are available. And now what I've learned is, you know, building a team, it takes being able to recruit talent on a consistent, uh, on a consistent, consistently interviewing. You know, when I first started interviewing, it was super awkward. I didn't know what to ask, but getting your reps in, getting your reps in, you're going to get better at anything, right? So. I've been able to kind of dial that in and uh, ask the right questions and really get in touch with what it takes to find a good person to join your team. Cause I'm looking to assemble the Avengers, whatever you want to call it, build an amazing team that can take us to the Super Bowl. You know, I, I love the 49ers. So I'm always like, man, I'm trying to, I'm trying to build my 49ers team. I need to find my McCaffrey, my Purdy. If you know, uh, if you know the Niners, then you know what I'm talking about. I'm trying to find these game changing people that I can bring on. You know, we're not a multi-million dollar business yet, so you can only get so far on the budget we have you know, to recruit talent. Nevertheless, you can get creative about that as well. Bonuses and incentives based on performance, right? But yeah, that's what I've been learning as far as team building. We now have a funnel that can uh, put people through, built out a whole automation sequence to get interviews consistent and all that good stuff. So lastly, the major thing we started doing is just tracking everything. As you can see in our stats, if you can't measure it, you can't improve it. I'm a firm believer in that. And now we have pretty much every metric dialed in as far as the sales. The next phase is to really dial in the metrics as far as client success. So knowing exactly what our retention is, our attrition, are we at 17%, 18% attrition? Having those numbers really dialed in is our next phase. And uh, yeah, I can't stress enough the importance of, of tracking. Like I spent a lot of time in business not tracking and it creates a lot of anxiety. I don't know where we're at. I'm just hoping for the best and kind of just, just going with the wind, which is the last way you want to run a business. It's just not, it's not good. It's not smart. It's not wise. And it's going to set you up for failure. What I have found in the last few months of actually tracking our numbers is it helps me make decisions based on the data because oftentimes in business you're a human being your emotions are going to get the best of you you're going to feel like giving up it's going to get hard and you feel like oh this isn't worth it this isn't working and all of those thoughts of, and doubts are going to dominate your mind and cause you to throw in the towel and give up but when you can go back to the hard data and look at all the facts then it's going to help put things into perspective right it's like this month, things have really slowed down. We're having some challenge. We only have five new deals, yet we have 12, five we've brought in in cash collected. So we're not doing that bad, even though we've had some slow weeks uh, and we have a week of appointments lined up that we can really boost this and get this up to you know, 20, 25K. So having the data keeps you grounded. That's what I've noticed. It actually makes it exciting as a, as a CEO, it helps you feel aligned. Like, yeah, you're actually being a good CEO. You're being a good business leader where you have all your metrics dialed in and you can make those decisions and then you can see the results of your efforts. So if we're gonna focus this month on increasing our close rate, boom, this is the result. We saw a 10% increase, awesome. How do we get to 40% now? What are the things we gotta start doing? Do we need to start doing daily team huddles? Do we need to change our, our pitch? Do we need to change our intro? Like what are the areas we can focus on? We can do that. This month, what we did is I hired a BDR, business development rep, so our, our goal is to increase our show rate, get that back up to 60%. And that's what this BDR is going to do, All right, Their whole job is to be calling leads, qualifying leads within two to five minutes of them opting in. So I'm super excited about that. And my point is I'll be able to see the direct result of their efforts because I have their numbers all tracked. I know exactly their effort. I know exactly their production. It's awesome. I love it. I'll never go back to not tracking the numbers in my business. So moving forward, like I said, the goal is to get the close rate up to 40%. The challenges we're facing are, you know, getting the retention up higher for sure, building out our client success team, continually improving our product, our onboarding experience, and then just keep consistent, consistent with the ads, consistent with 
producing new you know, advertising creatives every single week, getting the close rate up to 40% and just keep doing the same thing, meeting with my team, coaching the team, just get everything dialed in where it's just super boring. Because super boring is a good place to be, at least that's my goal, where 40%, 50% close rate is just, that's what we do all the time. And all of these things are dialed in nice and tight. So that's where we're at. We'll do another update here in another four to six weeks and we'll see you soon.